do you and Kyle approach parenting the same? Do you regret not having a big wedding? And welcome to our YouTube channel. Welcome. We have upgraded ourselves and got a little microphone, but um, I'm too cheap to buy two, so we've got one for now, and we'll see if this takes off. Um, we're on our way to Cape Cod to auto camp, which is camping in Airstreamers. So that'll be the second half of this video. We've got one sleeping child back there and another one practicing his speaking. Silly Billy. I have asked you guys to ask us questions about parenting and marriage. Okay, let's just pause because we're going over a bridge and it's really pretty. It doesn't look as good because these railings. I promise it's pretty in person. It's not all about me. Let's get over it. Let's get over it. Let's get on it. <laughs> okay, so a lot of the ones is, do you and Kyle approach parenting the same or do you have compromises? I think we're very similar. The only thing that I do, I have, I'm more restrictive of is when the kids are crying, I go to pick them up sooner than Kyle does. Will you agree or disagree? I agree. Kyle wants to just, this is really awkward, I'm just holding this, but um, I- Just put it down, it'll pick it up. Do you think? <laughs> I know. He knows. Okay, well, if this is wrong, then it's Kyle's fault. I don't like to hear the kids cry. Kyle does, apparently. I don't like to hear the kids cry. Go about, about, about. A rotary. Hang on. I just think that... Oh my God, Sophie's got a mouth open back there. Bless her soul. They could, you know, benefit from a bit of self-regulation. Now we're seeing... The, we're reaping the benefits of not doing that with Charlie, because... As soon as he starts crying at night, he never goes back to sleep by himself. But yeah, I think I, I think in general we're pretty similar. Okay, so many questions about the UK. We're not going to answer UK questions. Um, a lot of people are asking how we found our sex life after having children. Um, I have to say, begged and 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 begged. And begged, and begged. After Sophie, we didn't wait long. It was six weeks, and then after Charlie, I think nine, six months. It was a while. Yeah, because I had postpartum depression. I honestly think that. After you have children, the most important thing to do as a woman is to look after yourself. And if a man cannot respect that, then I think your man has the wrong values, to be honest. Going through child labour is traumatic. It's a traumatic experience. And unfortunately, in this day and age, we don't have much support. Um, and yeah, that's my answer to that. How do you feel about it, Kyle? How do we how do we work through arguments? I personally like to have space after we argue and I think that's something Kyle's had to get used to because you want to have an argument and then like talk about it within that minute and it's like I like to resolve it. Yeah, within the minute of the argument which Correct. is doesn't need to be done. I think separate rooms, calm yourself and then come back. And sometimes I just don't even want to talk about it, but I think that's a very British thing of me. I just don't want to talk about it. Let's just move on over it yeah because if you don't talk about it it's just going to happen again don't agree why sometimes you just need you to get these things out you do agree because how many times do you go how many times have we had this conversation kyle yeah because you're useless sometimes no because we don't resolve the issues after we have them because you don't want to talk about it i also sometimes i'm i can't apologize so sometimes i'll just text it sometimes also if i'm annoyed i'll text because it's my easiest way of just um Doing that. That's true. It's texting. Do you want to give Charlie his dummy? One second, guys. Hey, people are asking for advice from going from one to two children. Buckle up. But that's not helpful. Typical male answer. I would say that get your first child into a routine. All right, we're going around and round about. I would say get your kids into a routine before baby number two comes. So when we had when we went from Charlie to Sophie, no, Sophie to Charlie, we already had Sophie in like a was it two two mornings a week, nine to twelve, at like a church like little preschool thing. So she had somewhere to go. Um, so when I was pregnant, I used to drop her off and then I used to just get back into bed because I was so exhausted. She also had swimming lessons already set up. So she had things to do. So she had like a routine. So that really is my best advice is to get the older child like into stuff. And it also gives, you were able to go and do those things with her. Whereas I stayed at home and just like was with the baby. That's true. I would also say buckle up actually is good advice because going from zero to one child is obviously life changing, but it- But you'll only have one a, kid. It's not, a, it's not that hard. Oh. Like, I, I know it's hard. 
Okay. But you only have one kid to look after, is what you mean. And you can like sit with the baby. You have your. You had a couple of weeks off, and all we had to do was worry about that one baby, and we just sat on the sofa, yeah. watch TV. Whereas when you have your second, you're like, it's a much. Different oh my experience. god, I have another one like yeah. that needs so much attention, and actually needs more attention because their their life has been rocked. And also be very conscious. This is other real advice. Be very conscious of what your older one is communicating to you because they will show obvious signs of, even if they're super supportive of having the baby, they'll show obvious signs of like jealousy and sadness and stuff and you just gotta make sure that you yeah. pay enough attention to the other one. How often do you have a date night, just the two of you? We have more support now, um, now we live in Boston, because Kyle's parents live an hour and a half away and Brits are probably listening to this thinking, oh my God, an hour and a half away when your parents probably live down the road. But it has helped us because Kyle's parents are extremely hands-on and our kids love Kyle's parents. So if they're listening to this, thank you. They take the kids once a month for a weekend. So they go up Friday and get them back Yeah, Sunday. we don't really have the, hear all so we don't, talk about that. You have to have a date night once a week. And yeah. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem that practical. It doesn't so seem practical for us. My parents take the kids for a weekend and yeah. then we have a weekend to just relax and do what we want to do. We don't have a babysitter. I'm nervous still for a babysitter. I had a lot more anxiety around Charlie than I did about Sophie. I don't know, I'm too nervous to have a babysitter and someone come into my house. My mum used to just have an agency. She's just random people who should just show up and babysit us. I'm just a bit more nervous to have a babysitter. Maybe something I'll get over, I don't know. I mean, it, hopefully it's something I'll get over. I'd love to meet someone that I trust enough. Yeah, it's just not practical for us to have a date night once a week. We have it once a month. And then we just, we sort of have date nights in the house. We like, we watch shows together. That's it. It's a bit That's annoying. part of our date weekend is that one of those nights is always just ordering food and yeah, not we, doing anything. How did you encourage Kyle to bond, get excited when you were pregnant? I don't think, and you might disagree with this because you're, you're a man, but I don't think men really become parents until the baby is born. And I don't think that's their fault. They just don't have, and I'm sure some do, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rules, but the baby is like literally growing inside of you and you feel the kick. So you're gonna have this stronger bond with your baby at first. Whereas they don't have that, they don't have the hormones. It's just not, I don't know, do you agree? Yeah, the bar I, as a dad, I don't think the bond happens with the baby until it comes out. You feel a stronger bond with the mother. Cause, yeah, because you, you know, naturally become more like- Carrying the baby, and, yeah. Protective. And I don't think you had to encourage me to bond with the children once they popped out. No, I have to say, like, one thing I will always say, no matter what happens in our future, if something was to happen to me, you know, God, I don't believe in God, you know, universe. If something was to happen to me and I wasn't around anymore, if something's happened to our marriage, I know that Kyle is a fantastic parent. I wouldn't even say you're a good dad because I think the bar is quite low for dads. I think you're a fantastic parent as a whole. Oh my god, that was so nice of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Um, with saying that though, I am the, still the primary parent in the fact that I do... Spend more time with them. I spend more time with them. I do practical things like I make sure the kids are fed. In the, like the deck. Kyle has a, like an office job, even though his office is upstairs. But I spend more time with them. I organise swimming lessons at school all things like that, but we do have roles in our house, but you are pretty good. I didn't, I didn't realize how good Carl was until, until I heard other people on like social media's experience with their partners. Again, it's the same thing as like when people ask me, how did you convince Kyle to have another baby? For me, I don't think you, the word convincing, I, I should, you shouldn't have to be convincing someone to have children with you in my, oh, I don't think you should ever have to convince someone to have a baby with you. I think convincing is a very strong word. That's like, to me, convincing sounds like you're begging someone to have a baby with you. And I'm just like, wrong person for you then. I, the real I, question is how did I convince Caroline to be romantic again after having children? <laughs> that was That was, that was convincing. convincing, that was begging, yeah. Who is the better parent? <laughs> me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we both, we both have very good roles. I, we both need each other. As of right now, how our lifestyle is, we need each other. We both struggle when it's just one of us. Do you both run the finances or does one <laughs> of you handle it? Kyle does the finances. I don't, I don't know Caroline how Caroline couldn't tell you a single I don't know who does our gas. That we have. I just know we have USAA, Ca that's it. Yeah, Caroline could tell you <laughs> four, five accounts. USAA, yeah. Netflix, Disney Plus, oh, yeah. Hulu, and Peacock. But I wouldn't know how to pay them. 
No, no, you wouldn't. I wouldn't know how to pay them. I know nothing. I know I know. And you didn't even set up your own USAA. No, I didn't even do that. You didn't even sign into it yourself on your phone. No, I need Kyle to do absolutely everything when it comes to things like. That. I you, don't. The other night. I don't even. You know, I don't even me, have a. I don't even have a login to our credit card. I have no idea. You asked me to cancel your own class at the gym. But I obviously make an income. So what I do is I just send. I have my own bank account, Kyle. I have my own bank account and then I have my own savings account. But for my savings account, it's just really for my taxes because I'm self-employed, so I have to pay my own taxes. And then Kyle had his bank account and then he has the credit card, which we do Amazon because Amazon have such amazing points and that's how we buy things like the pram, the travel pram that we just bought, that bugaboo. So we use it for things like that, our Dyson. But I just give Kyle all of our... Oh, there's an ambulance coming. Everyone move over. I just give Kyle like... After I take my tax money and then I put a little bit aside for like shopping, I give Kyle all my money. We have a financial advisor who helps us with, I don't even know, investment. <laughs> invest There's the answer to your question. Investment. What does our financial invest advisor investing. help us with? Investing. Investing. And our pension, like boring stuff like that. Not like, he doesn't te like, yeah, it's just boring stuff, isn't it? Important for stuff. You. Important stuff. I find all of this boring. I'm what shocked. Is, what is the best and hardest part in your marriage right now? I would say the best part of our marriage is the kids. Like we have something that we share together that we love so much that we both know is more important than each other. I actually think that's really amazing. I think that's really good. Don't you think? Yeah. And what do you think is the worst part of our marriage? The kids. You get to answer the best part. Of your... <laughs> it's not the ki it's. Not it's not the kids directly, it is that, don't take this the wrong way, but in particular, because you spend more time with them, they stress you out much more. And when you are stressed out with the kids and with work, I just want, I just, very I isolate difficult. myself. I'm very, I get very overstimulated and stressed very easily. Yeah. And then I also, when I am that way, I just want complete isolation. I just want to be by myself. I don't want the kids near me. I don't want Carl near me. It's, and I don't blame you for, I get it. Yeah. I'm just saying like the kids that, are, the that kids is, are hard. Those are the most stressful. They're the times best and the worst part. Marriage. They're the best and the worst part of our marriage. I also like the fact that we're not. Um, I, I like that we got married. Our marriage is in our thirties. Do you agree? I feel like if our marriage was in our twenties, that's really hard because we know ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I was only twenty-eight when we got married. Yeah, but, but... whatever. But <laughs> Carl's a year younger than me. <laughs> More than that. The other thing. A year and three months. The sort of exception to that is I wouldn't change anything about the way that things have happened and worked out. I wouldn't have minded being married, getting married, Younger. being married for, no, for us specifically. Like you were already pregnant with so Oh, you wanted to be married for a little bit we longer before we had kids. and just been, our, been together a little bit longer. And Everything was very rushed for us. So we've definitely, we've had to like learn had to learn each other. We did not get married because of Sophie. We were already We, we got married for health insurance. We were already <laughs> engaged well before that. Oh. We lost, um, our ca my camera overheated, so we've just arrived at where we're going to have lunch before we can check into auto camp because the check-in is at four, so we are going to have some food here. Um, wake up this one, I'm a bit nervous about that. Yeah, and hang out, it's a really beautiful day and today is actually the best day weather-wise um, of our weekend. Charlie has now decided he knows how to walk. Good waving! Hi! Sophie, is the fire hot? Mommy, I'm just going to go around it and, and, the, and I'm going to get that walk off that chair. Okay, you got to go around all the way around the outside. Charlie cannot be trusted. This is so pretty. I can feel love from miles away Tells me stories of life in a more perfect place where I want to stay. Good morning, day number two. How did you sleep, Sophie? 20. You slept 20? Did you sleep good? 
Yeah. Do you sleep with mummy? Yes. So me and Sophie were up in here and then Kyle <gasps> and Charlie slept out in the main area. We are now moving into uh, the Vista Villas. X Suites. X X Suites Villas. So that we can experience them. They're slightly bigger and they're like a cabin. So we're gonna we're about to move now and then we'll spend one night there and we would have done one night here so we can check out both and let you guys know. But I think today we're gonna to go into Falmouth. So see you in a little while. And there's Charlie. Lazy Sunday mornings hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play a favorite movie, laying right beside me. I don't mind when it's just us two. The corner coffee shop we like to go. Late night walks with you to take me home. With you, I never feel alone. These little songs make me glad to call you mine. We are now on our way home. The kids are asleep. We've had the best time. I highly recommend 10 out of 10 families, the dogs, everything. It was so good. The kids had such an amazing time. It literally made me emotional, like how much fun they had. Anyway, let, we're, gonna, we're gonna do some more questions. Do you regret not having a big wedding? No. No, because we have a house. Yeah, and I think we'll do something small for our, not five year at this, maybe 10 year. Yeah. 10 year anniversary. Do a family and friends thing. Well, obviously it's my family and friends, who else would you invite? No, it just wasn't, it wasn't the right moment for us. I came over on a K-1 visa, so we had to land and have 90 days to get married. We didn't know how long the visa was going to take, so we thought like we couldn't plan the wedding. Um, we did sort of start going down the road of getting married in Barbados. I started talking to wedding planners and then it all just kind of, it just was too much. And then, and then I was pregnant, so, and then I was so scared to not have medical insurance when we were here and I was five months pregnant that we got married the next day that I li we literally I landed on the Sunday and I got mar married at 9 a.m. on the Monday went to the registry office like people were registering their cars next to us and got married and then drove straight to a military base to register me register me as a spouse so I could have health insurance because that's just what it's like here in the States you know if we crashed our car and I was pregnant we would just wouldn't be able to afford it and I've with no health insurance. What was the biggest change in your relationship after marriage? And how do you deal with it? We had a lot going on. We like met, got married and had kids all within like a year. Two years. Two years. So we never really had, I mean, we also, we, our non-kids life was in Dubai. Like we were in like La La Land. How do we, how did you manage me while I had postpartum depression? But well, I mean, I didn't even know I had it at the time. It was only when I sort of started coming out of it. But how, okay, how do you feel I was different? How did you try and support me differently with Charlie and to Sophie? I think with Charlie, with, with both kids, there were more times much more times, I don't know if I ever did it with Sophie, where you clearly were just not having it and it sounds mean, but I just sent you away. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't want to be around the kids. You didn't uh, want to be around anyone. No, I just Someone had to, to alone. tell you to just, go like, away. kind of in a mean way to be like, to force you to just like, go away, you're not making anything better. I understand you're upset, so just go do what you need to do. You gave so. me space. I don't want to talk. I just want to be by myself. So I think it's very yeah. dependent on the person, on what their like love language is or what their, because there's no, it, there's no one size fits all. Because some people, if their husband told them to like go away, they'd probably be really upset. But like for me, that actually works for me. So yeah, I think it, it's a hard one because it's such a complex individual experience. Was Sophie planned? We got drunk. Depends who you ask. We got drunk and sort of like, let's have kids and we got pregnant like that week. I had left Dubai. One of us, not named Kyle, was like, I wanna have a baby right now. How do we stay connected? I don't really know. Are we connected? What does that <laughs> question mean? Like... Okay, we've, no, we're now on my phone. Okay, so how do we stay connected? And you said... I said anyone who says that they're deeply connected at this stage in their life with two kids in a place they don't know if 
I don't necessarily want to be like physically. I think is that's not that's yeah. not practical. I don't. I think we're doing really well. I don't think we're disconnected. I think we put in time for ourselves. Like at the end of the day, we both reset and then we come together and we hang out yeah. and talk about the day I think it's and important for us is our, in our personalities that we have time away from each other like we have individual fun well it's not even that it's just and then have fun together yeah but even on a daily basis like some personal space to just reset even if it's like 30 minutes at the end of the night where you take a shower and I watch TV or whatever for 30 minutes an hour and then we get in bed at like 9 and we're and then we watch TV and stuff we together yeah. and talk about the day like that's how I think we stay it connected. works for us yeah. yeah and we do things like this where yeah we, we're connected as a family unit yeah. I think this is just a really hard part of life and for us our priority really is the kids at the moment so and we just do our best with each other but at the end of the day, we both love the kids so much. We want the kids to have so much. And I just think only prioritizing each other isn't realistic for us. So much is happening in our lives apart from our marriage. So we're just doing our best. And I think the most important thing is that just both having the same end goal to stay together, to be together and to be happy. So even if you're, you know, you're not completely lock tight like you were when you first got married as long as you're on the same path and you're on you have the same end goals and you're communicating that you still want that is what keeps you connected during this hard time and like a one-year-old and a three-year-old that's not for the faint heart like that's hard yeah and i think recognizing that we still love each other but also both of us are are doing our best doing our best with each other and kids and work and yes, obviously <laughs> all right well i guess we're just gonna end now <laughs> bye guys bye bye